detail might be pretty long, but I want to show you the whole thing because it's really unusual. So I have my little swatch here, which is just um, just a swatch. I always put garter stitch around the edge of my swatch, so it's easy to uh, make it lay flat if I want to measure gauge or anything. And then I have a markers around the 10 stitches. That would be this box. So on the first row of this, you can see I have knit three in the 10 stitches. So I'm going to just knit three, however you knit, hold the yarn needles, that's all fine. Knit two together, and then I have a double yarn over. So I'm gonna do two yarn overs right next to each other. If I hold the yarn in my left hand, how I normally do, I'm gonna swing the needle around, just scoop up the yarn, and then I'm gonna swing it around again. So see, I've got it wrapping around the needle two times. So how do you do that if you had the yarn in your right hand? And I'm showing that because I know it's different for people that carry the yarn in their right hand to make yarn overs. So here we are, we're ready to make the two yarn overs. The yarn's in the back because we're knitting. So I bring it to the front and over the top of the needle, there's the first yarn over. Then I bring it to the front again between the needles and over the top again. So I get those two yarn overs. Then after that on the chart, I have SSK. So I'm just going to do my SSK. Sometimes on lace I just do knit two together through the back loop, but in this one I did SSK. And then I have three more knits. One, two, three, and I'm up to the end of my 10 stitch marker. Then you do whatever is left in the rest of the row, and in this case I just have some plain stuff. Okay, so that's row one. Row two, we're going to work back up to where those 10 stitches are on the chart. Again, I'm just working a swatch. Okay, now the thing to remember here is even though this looks symmetrical, is that on right side rows, you read the chart from right to left, and the number for the beginning of the row is over here. So row 23, you're reading starting at the number going this way. And then the next row of this in this pattern is row 24. So we have to read the chart going back this way. The reason is, even though it looks symmetrical, is the decreases slant in different directions. And we want to get them to slant the way they line up and make a tidy motif. If you do the wrong decreases, you'll still have the proper number of stitches, but you won't have this pretty line that is created by the way it is charted here. So we're coming this way and we're gonna have purl two because we're on the wrong side row, okay? And then this is purl two together through the back loop or you could do SSP if you want. So purl two together through the back loop you have to bring the yarn to the front. Then you have to bring the needle around behind the stitches and come through two of them together from left to right. So it's kind of tricky, but then you finish it as a regular purl, okay? So we did that purl two together. Now we have this brioche thing going on, and that's pretty simple. We're going to slip this yarn over from the previous row, both of them together just as one thing, and make another yarn over that goes around the needle with it so it becomes a double strand of yarn over. So again, if the yarn's in your left hand, you just catch it. If the yarn's in your right hand for this row, it's still pretty easy because the yarn's in the front because we're making a purl. So we bring it over the top to the back and then we bring it to the front again because we're gonna make another purl. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do on that. So now we have two strands of yarn there. On this side, going this way again, purl two together. And then we just finish the plain stitches that are in that square and finish the row. All right, so again, turning. Now we're gonna have fewer stitches. So you notice we had three here on each side of the stuff. And then we have two. Now in this row, we're gonna have one. And again, we're starting on this side and going that way as we knit, because it's a right side row again. So get up to that spot on your knitting, do the rest of the stuff in your row, and then you're gonna have 
knit one, knit two together, and see how those decreases are lining up, making a tidy bit there. That's why we're arranging them how we are. Now again, you're just going to do the yarn over by catching it at the same time that you slip those so you have a third loop going over those together. Again, if you have the yarn in your right hand, your yarn's in the back, so you're going to bring it to the front as you slip those, and then it's got to go to the back again to do the SSK. Okay, I can't do SSK with my right hand because I'm not that great of a knitter, so I'm switching back to my other hand, which is my main hand for knitting. I can do a little bit, but not all. So then we had that one stitch left there, and then finish the row. Okay, so I'm going to skip in the video this row because it's the same as this row. So the fourth row of the motif is really the same as the second row of the motif except you don't have these extra stitches. So you're just going to decrease SSP or purl two together through the back loop, do the brioche thing, decrease. Then we're going to come back around and then the next row which is the, the right side row, the fifth row of this chart. There's no more decreases. You're just going to knit, do the brioche thing, knit. So you basically have only three stitches left. And then we'll come back on this row, the sixth row of the motif, and I'll show you how we start to get our stitches back because we're down to three there. 